everyone seems to hate it. <laughs> now everybody's ganging up against me. For what? What the f did I do? Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're well. Today, I've tried to dress as spooky. Well, you can't really see that. It's like a cobweb. You see? You see? <laughs> Okay, I mean, dang. What, you want a Scooby snack? I've tried to dress as spooky. I feel like I need to go like this the whole time. So today, I'm here to give you all the spooky books that you should be reading this spooky season. Let me know down below if you've read any of these or any of them on your TBR, and let's just get into it. So the first book I want to recommend is The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. I love this book so much. It's what got me into Ruth Ware, who's now one of my favourite thriller authors. It was the first thriller I ever read as well, so it really got me into the thriller genre. I owe a lot to this book. <laughs> she is the mother I never had. She is the sister everybody would want. Basically in this, our main character, don't ask me her name because I can never remember people's names. She takes a nanny job at this really rich house, but it's kind of got like very old parts and very new parts. It's the kind of house that has been updated to be like really technology new, but it's like originally a very, very old house. And when she gets there, things start freaking her out. She starts hearing noises above her bedroom. And the question basically is whether it is ghostly or a more human culprit. I think it's based on the turn of the screw, which am I right in saying that is a ghost story? Or like, am I completely wrong in that? Cause I know Haunting of Blind Manor, which has just come out, which I haven't watched yet. Don't have a go at me. Like, I'll get there. I know that's based on the turn of the screw and that's a ghost story. So maybe it is, I don't know. Are you dumb? Are you dumb? Are you dumb? She's accused of killing one of the children that she looked after. And she's saying, I didn't kill that kid. I didn't kill that kid. And she's writing letters to a lawyer. And that's how the whole book is told. I loved this book so much. It was such a brilliant reading experience when I read it for the first time. It was really just getting involved in a whole new genre, a whole new vibe of reading that I hadn't read before. I think I read, what I used to read a lot of? I don't even know. Fantasy only maybe? I don't know. It was just so cool to read a thriller and now thriller is one of my most read genres, one of my favourite genres. If you want the kind of book that isn't like straight up, I'm ghostly, but has a hint of it, you know, like ghosts aren't walking around from the get go, but has the hint of it and the suggestion of it. And I, I can't tell you whether it is in the, in the end because that would be spoiling it. But if you want something that has that suggestion, it's kind of like light spook, light spook. <laughs> Okay, the crickets aren't even laughing. Uh, I think this would be a really good option. Next, you know I have to recommend The Diviners by Libba Bray. I do have the third one with me, but I haven't read it yet. I only have books with me that I've only just read or haven't read yet. So this is the third one, which is Before the Devil Breaks You, but the second one is Lair of Dreams, which is my favorite. I do prefer Lair of Dreams to The Diviners, so maybe I'll love this one even more. But this is a really popular YA fantasy series where a group of friends who are diviners, diviners is if you have like a special ability, some kind of like supernatural special ability like our main character Evie can read minds I think no she can't she can't read minds <laughs> She can uh, touch an object and see its history, like see how it's linked to that person and what that person has gone through in relation to that object. That's what she can do. The Scooby Gang of Friends, it is a Scooby Gang, and I love Scooby Gang vibes. They have to fight against the forces of evil, devils, demons, darkness. All of this, they have to fight against that together and try and defeat it. And there's kind of like a villain of the week, not a villain of the week, but you know how like in a show like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, you'd have the villain of each episode and you have an overall arcing villains for the whole season that's what this has like each book has its villain and then there's suggestions of like an even darker more evil villain throughout so i'm very excited to get to number three hopefully i'm going to be reading this soon and it's just really fun it's set in the 1920s in new york i really love the vibes of it if you haven't picked up the diviners yet i would really really recommend it next i want to recommend a book that i have only just read so i don't want to speak too much about it because i'll be reading it in this weekend's vlog but it is catherine house by elizabeth thomas now this book everyone seems to hate it <laughs> Now everybody's ganging up against me. For what? What the fuck did I do? When you go on Goodreads, everyone I'm friends with has given it like two stars. And I'm like, guys, 
why? It's got like an average of like 3.1, which is so low. Like usually if I saw that, it would scare me off a book. But let me tell you, Catherine House is dope. It's so good. It's a really weird book. So we follow our main character, Inez, as she joins Catherine House, which is this really, really prestigious school that's really hard to get into. And you know that once you join, you are not leaving for three years. It's, a, it's supposed to make you able to focus more and devote yourself to your studies. But this is one of the weirdest books I've ever read. It's like you're reading it through binoculars or through a blindfold. There's this definitely a mysterious element to it. Like Inez kind of don't care. She kind don't give a shit she's kind of like that ain't my problem I'm not getting involved in that but the spooky element of this is that the school is renowned for something called psalm which is kind of like our life energy they're renowned for testing on it and th there's some spooky shit that goes on I loved it Inez is dope the story is dope I love how disjointed and fragmented and like it's like you're in a dream or a nightmare it's like you're in a dream reading this I just really loved it. I will give some more in-depth thoughts on it in this week's vlog. I can't wait to read everything Elizabeth Thomas puts out in the future and if you're looking for something that's unique, weird, a bit dark academia, a bit spooky, really you need to go into it knowing it's so weird. <laughs> like it's so weird. One of the weirdest books I've ever read but I loved it so I would really really recommend picking it up. Next I wanted to recommend another Ruth Ware which is The Death of Mrs. Westaway. So this is a book I think that came out before The Turn of the Key and it's got very similar vibes in the sense that there's this like old house that kind of gothic vibe that Ruth Ware does sometimes. Both of these books have that. This again I wouldn't say is ghostly but it's very spooky and kind of like gothic horror I would say throughout it which is much more just you're on edge throughout and everything is through subtext it's not through jump scares or ghosts and in this our main character she receives a letter saying that she has inherited a large sum of money from um i think it's her aunt or grandma one of the one of them some family member dying <laughs> oh really that sucks. She is like, well, I know who my grandparents are, so this isn't it, but she's really strapped for money. And so she's like, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna go and pretend to be this person and I'm gonna get a lot of money off of them. And when she gets there, she realizes that not everything is that it seems. She's getting a much higher cut of the money than she thought she would. And it's just this very on edge, tense, gothic mystery thriller set in this really old house. And it's just kind of got these very spooky, on edge, nervous vibes to it that I think are perfect for this time of year. I didn't love it as much as Turn in the Key. It's not as much of a, like a whodunit thriller or like a really high paced thriller. It's a lot slower. It's a lot more subtle. I really like that element of it. So I would really recommend picking it up. Next is a graphic novel, which I speak about occasionally. For those of you who maybe want a spooky graphic novel, I would recommend The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. So this is volume two, which I am hoping I'm gonna read soon. Um, and this is basically the story of a young boy whose parents are killed um, in their bed, stabbed in their sleep. He manages to escape. He's like a toddler, but he just manages to like know that some dark shit is up. And he just crawls out of his house and into the graveyard where he is raised by the ghosts and this kind of like supernatural being. The lighting right now. I can get real dark. Well, we all know. And actually, I don't think everyone knows the extent of my darkness. Like, I can get dark. This graphic novel series is just his adventures throughout the graveyard and like the stuff he gets up to living in such a supernatural environment. I just think it's a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed it. Each little short story, at least in the first one, I don't know about this one, but in the first one, they all have different artists, which I think is really cool getting to showcase different artists. And you, I personally enjoyed like some art styles more than others, but I think it added like a bit of variety to the graphic novel. And yeah, I'm really excited to read volume two. I think this is also a book. I keep saying that I never look it up. I could be completely wrong like I don't prepare for this the level of unprofessionalism far too much I think it is a book as well so if you're interested in the story maybe go read that but I really really like the graphic novel version and then the last book that I wanted to recommend is one of my favorite books ever like I love it so much and I want to reread it but I don't have it with me and it is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo listen Miss Lee Bardugo is making us wait to at least 2022 for the second one in this series. And I swear she said originally that this was going to be like a seven book series. Girl, how long are we about to spend? I just need it right now. Like, please don't make us wait, please. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. So this is about Alex Stern. Alex Stern is iconic enough that I remember her name. No one else has that. But Alex Stern, 
lives in my mind rent free. So she comes from a very difficult kind of criminal past and she gets a second shot at life basically. She gets this really good offer to go to Yale and to supervise the secret societies there who deal in dark magic, ghosts, blood magic, all these different things. They each kind of have different tools they use to like predict things or perform their magic. And she goes there and it's kind of a murder mystery. A murder occurs on campus and I think she's really trying to push for people to notice that this was probably done by one of the societies. That's what she thinks, but no one wants to admit that. And just the kind of like gothic, dark academia vibes, ghosts, Yale, Lee Bardugo's amazing writing. I just love it. I just loved it so much. This was my introduction to Lee Bardugo. I'd never read any of her stuff before. And I just love it. Like it's so good. It's so dark, so mysterious. Darlington, you can get it. Man, I want to fuck you the minute I saw you. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. Great, I don't mean this to feel so like that, but yeah, he is hot. He is fine. Okay, I did want some of that. I just think if you haven't read Ninth House by now, you're doing yourself a disservice. It's coming out in paperback in the UK like next week. I don't know about the US, but in the UK it comes out in paperback like next week. So that's the perfect opportunity to get your hands on it if you haven't read it before. And it is literally... Out of all these books, my number one recommendation. And you say, Megan, you should have put it at the start then. And I say, no, let's end on the high. Ninth House, I just want you all to read it so bad. It is so good. So that is all of my spooky book recommendations. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you have any spooky book recommendations because I'm always looking for more. I've got a couple on my TBR that I'm really excited to read. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped and I will see you very soon in another video. Bye.